about two years ago I was asked about what formulas work for writing fan fictions, and I wrote an article that was posted up on Comic Vine detailing my methods and information and help on how to write a good fan fiction. Well, so, as I said, it's been two years. I thought I would try and do a little audio recordings on how to write good fact fan fiction. And there's, as I found, a good couple of rules to go by with when it comes to writing fan fiction. Now, the first rule is, of course, the most obvious. Pick something you're a fan of. Be it a television show, comic book, book series, any form of media that attracts public attention, it's a good start. And it's simple. Fans of any given series put heart and soul into their work. If you don't believe me, look at half of the licensed fan fiction out there. I'm talking like the Star Trek novels, the Star Wars novels any of these serialized novels that are based off a television show or a movie franchise you're going to see some pretty good work there and it's all licensed the fan fiction you see on fanfiction.net can range anywhere from pretty good to pretty horrid now fans they come up with fun stories that's they're fueled by the imagination it's more difficult to write a fiction or anything if you're not fans of a franchise. And also, if you're just a vindictive person you, who hates a character, whatever you come up with is going to be negatively received. And trust me, I've seen a few. So, obviously, go with rule one, something you're a fan of. If you're not a fan of something, don't write about it. If you're vindictive towards it, please don't write about it. Because it's going to be nothing more than vile. I can guarantee you on that one. I've seen a few. The second rule is to pick a genre you like. And there are a good many out there. I mean, in my when I started, I guess the main genres were action, drama, horror, and comedy, and science fiction. Now it's been breaking out so much that there's more genres and subgenres. If you are a fan of drama, you like relationships to bloom and blossom, go with the drama. If you want something that's always lighthearted, write a comedy. Comedy also tends to give you an, an effective leeway for breaking character and breaking the fourth wall. And trust me, that is always guaranteed to give humorous moments. Now, I also I will say that other good ones, if you, especially if you want to develop characters and and such, go with action. Because if you like a good deal of fights, you're going to see, you know, action's the way to go. And each of these genres will have their own sub-genres in them that could go across different areas. And, well, let's go to rule three. When, you're, when you are deciding what you want to do genre-wise, decide what type of story you want to do. If you want to do an adaptation, like putting a game that you've played into prose you're writing it from the point of view as the protagonist you have existing elements to build off of you can stray a little bit from the given but you will also have to stick with what is known you add your own little twist to characters that already exist or a story that you already exist. I mean, we all know how Resident Evil plays out. And if we don't all know, then you haven't played the game or haven't even seen it, which this day and age is very rare. But when you're writing 
based off that. And a good example, Stephanie Daniel Perry's adaptation of the first Resident Evil game. You have expectations to meet. People know how the story is going to go, so you have to throw maybe throw in some little elements in there that you make it unique to yourself. This can be tricky in some points, but there you have a more set up storyline. You can do an original idea, which gives you more leeway, but you also have to keep in mind that what you're doing must appear to mesh with the style. I mean, I'm, you can do an original story based off of, for example, the Dresden Files. But it would have to be more in the same tone of what might happen in that series. I mean, is it possible that Dresden might get tied up with a situation that would have him run into the FBI? Yes. Is it possible that it might run into the X-Files type thing with not making it X-Files? Yes. Is it possible that what he finds out is actually it's an alien invasion that's stretching it in believability trust me all right but also you must remember that anything you create as an original as an original idea is basically an offshoot from the given it doesn't matter if it's accepted as can canon or not because you deviate from it. But if you t try and keep it close with how a series goes, you're pretty much safe on that. Lastly, there is the crossover, which is always tricky to work with because you're not de dealing with one group, you're dealing with multiple. And you have to keep a sense of plausibility with that. And I remember seeing a Generation X Harry Potter crossover event. Good pretense deviated from the main story because you're adding a new element into it. But it was actually quite well done in my opinion. The more likely the, the encounter is, the better a chance you will have. So something like Harry Potter Dresden Files not so isn't going to work so much because you would have to assume that the wardens and the White Council in the Dresden verse would have already been aware of Voldemort and taken care of him. By the same respect, you would see more more interaction with such characters. Remember, Harry Potter's pretty much kept limited to England, but acknowledged that there were wizards from all over the world, and that even Voldemort had gone to Albania. So you can't necessarily use that as a good crossover with Dres with Dresden Files because they all have. No, let's face it, Dresden Files, while limited to Chicago, has also gone outside of Chicago and acknowledges that there's wizards in Greece, Scotland, there's paranormal elements down in South America. So, it that one doesn't work. Something more like Generation X Gen 13, which has also been which has been explored in the comics has a plausible happening. Even if multiple universes exist and they're in two separate universes, i.e. I think now Gen 13 is now part of the DC comic universe and of course Generation X was Marvel comic, their prior crossovers would have an explanation either between the the amalgam the amalgam comics event that happened several years ago or by the fact that there were characters that can jump realities. Next thing I want to keep want to keep in mind is plan out your works. If you're doing a one shot, or it's going to be a long story, or even a series of stories, 
plot it out. You can start with a basic plot, that's what I usually do, and work from there. A basic idea, the bad guy attacks the good guy, of course. But each step along the way, you need to flesh out what the story is. Why are they attacking? What's the bad guy doing this time? How are the good guys getting involved? You have to plan these out. It also helps when you keep in mind of what type of writing style you're going to have going to use. You're going to use, in the basic sense, the third person limited, where your your character is you are outside and you only get the view of the person who's being the focus. I.e., in a Star Trek: The Next Generation novel. Scenes are being viewed from the point of view of Jean-Luc Picard. He has no idea what his colleagues are thinking and can only judge by what he observes. So he could see Riker thinking, oh, let's do, you know, have a look on his face saying, oh, this is how it should be handled, but can't say what his thoughts are. He can only assume by reading facial cues. It also, like, third, their third person omniscient, which third person knows what everybody's thinking. And it can be somewhat tricky to follow that. There's also first person limited, where a perfect example of that is, of course, the Dresden files. Everything's told from Harry's point of view in the major novels. And you only get an idea of what the other characters are thinking judging by what Harry reads in them. I will try and do more of these rules later, but this is just the first one, and if you think you find this, any of this information worth keeping track of, worth knowing, and taking noteworthy, you know, please subscribe and please check out things. And maybe I'll do more detailing the various fanfics I've come up with and my advice on other fanfics. I've seen a fair share, both good and bad. Thank you.